Quite it's true. exactly why we're doing this. And um, it, it's interesting because life is a journey from the unconscious to a higher consciousness when we sure. come here. Well, yeah. it's also, Kelly, it goes along with it. And no matter how you want to say it, um, it goes through a sense of, you know, we have knowingness when we're on the other side. We know everything. But then we come down to this very, very dense vibrations, this physical earth. We start forgetting things. We go through what's called the valley of forgetfulness. And we forget everything, clean slate. Now, why would we do that? Well, in a way, if we remembered some things in the past, we wouldn't grow in this lifetime because we'd rely on the past, even down to situations or karmic from other karmic experiences from other people. We'd be so obsessed about the past, we wouldn't live in the present. And this is all about living in the present. We've come back down here to rely on, we can remember things if you want, in a way, by relying on our intuition, by going within and listening to your soul self, because your soul's been around through eons and eons of spaces and places. So the truth is inside you. That's where it is. Mm -hmm. And, and when, once one starts accepting themselves from the inside out, life will change. Your life will change in all dire different directions. Your thoughts will change. Your life experience will change. People will change. It happens that way. It's not living outside. It's not out there. It's in yeah. the inside. Yeah. Start living on the inside. That's yeah. the first step. Self-awareness. Self-awareness is everything, actually. Yeah. And people get stuck because they get stuck with either sadness or guilt or shame or anything that is in the um, either the subconscious. Because when we're in a conscious state, James, it's it's being in the moment. If you're really conscious, exactly. we're really in the moment of, of everything. That's it. That's the consciousness is the awareness, actually, of the self in space and time. So it's where we are, but often so we we'll talk about people that are unconscious. We exactly we I should well, go through the levels of consciousness, Kelly. So people, okay, should I do that? Okay, yeah. so the, the three levels of consciousness, and then we're going to talk about higher, much higher levels, but to how to get there. But the first level is you know consciousness. Again, if we just talk about consciousness, it's just the awareness of the self in space and time, and then we have the subconscious, and the subconscious is defined as the reactions and actions we realized when we think of it. And what it means is this, the subconscious is a part of our consciousness that is not actively in our focal awareness. So it allows things that we don't have to think about. So in other words, uh, breathing. We don't really think about breathing, we just breathe. So our subconscious, it can be compared to flying a plane on autopilot. Yeah, yeah. It's constantly running a program to control how we walk, how we sit, how we breathe, how, how we, we talk, breathe. Our, our heartbeat, our circulation, our heartbeat, system, our everything. Yeah. And they just happen because the memory, the information to do them is just stored in our brain. You know, um, it's interesting. Your subconscious mind causes you to feel emotionally and physically uncomfortable whenever you attempt to do anything new or different or to change any of your established patterns really? of behavior. Because why, James? Because there's a sense of fear and discomfort, okay, that's in our subconscious and it's been activated, okay? So you have to be really um, mindful of what is it, is activates it, you. Is it because some things are new and you're not used to that? Or you, you, or you had some fear, you had a mother that said, don't ever, you know, eat after you swim or swim after you eat or, you know, whatever those things are, whatever the, whatever it is, because, and then underneath that, is the unconscious and the unconscious is the final level um, of consciousness and that's composed of thoughts memories primitive instinctual that are deeply buried within us and so we may not be aware of our behavior and i'll give you an example let's say you are so negative and nobody will hire you because you're so negative but you don't even know you're so negative you don't even know why you're so negative it it's it's things that could have happened to you when you're young, when you, 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 your mother, your father, somebody put a lot of stuff on you. And so you have to really become mindful of um, your behavior, of how you are. It's, you consciously have to start waking up to um, what fears you have, what traumas did you have. That's why therapy would be is really good so it leads you to the next place so james in in my case i had a traumatic brain injury as you know i had a sudden shift in awareness okay literally and i started um 
my I started thinking a completely different way. But before that, as you know, I went through a lot of traumas and I had a lot of therapy in my in my trauma work to get to me where I am. And I think that you can make a sudden shift, but I think you in order to do it, you have to be aware of what would hold you back. Because if you have any fear right. of moving forward, it's going to snap you back. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And so I said, where, where do premonitions come from? What level of consciousness? Oh, premonitions. Oh, that's a great question. Where do great premonitions? Question. Yeah. Where do premonitions come from? It could be a your forefront. soul. I think it's your, your soul. soul self. I agree. I, I was thinking your soul self. Yeah. Premonitions before pre motion before they happen. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It's a good question though. Yeah. Um, um. So a couple of things. Um. I, I wrote down some some little notes here too to keep people using that that mind shift how do we do that first you got to be ready to do it right you have to so be ready for sure it's changing you have to be conscious about it yes yeah, so be conscious about it changing your belief systems changing your perspective of things and believe me it changes if you start changing for instance stop being critical of self it'll right. change everything it'll change everything. right you stop being critical of yourself of other people you realize people just having experiences how can we judge judge others we don't know them we don't know right. the past we're just seeing their experiences. So who are we to judge others, right? Mm -hmm. That's very, very true. So we get, we get to that space. Oh, yeah, the super consciousness, the soul. That's very good. Um, and, and really, we mentioned before, uh, being present in the moment, in the present moment. Mm -hmm. Do everything in the present moment. Yesterday has already happened. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow is yet to be. And even though the past might influence certain choices you make or certain behaviors, you have to start living in the present moment. That's all we have. Yes. Yes. Time. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> here's a good one. If you want to fly, give up, give up weights. Uh, if you want to fly, give up the weights that lie you down, that keep you back. So if you right want to be free, on. what mm -hmm. keeps you down? What is it that keeps you down? And that's it's where you have to have a real, oh, you have to real look at, at that. You have to be really realistic at what holds you back. Why are you being held back? And, and is why it do you trauma? choose to be held back, right? Yeah, I mean, what is it that's causing you to? have fear of moving forward here because it's we're all losing here. someone that's a good quite you're right could be it could yeah. be it could it's um a lot of people have a fear of if i make this choice i'll be abandoned right if i go forward i'll be abandoned i can tell you this you will be <laughs> and guess what then you're free okay you face everything you need to face and then what's going to hold you back it's true it's just yourself. So yeah. you got to have a relationship with self. That's really where the grounding is self. Having a sense of who you are is really, really important oh. because when you have a sense of who you are, people yeah. can't knock you down or you won't let them knock you down because yeah. what other people think of you is none of your business. And when you're free to be who you are, yeah. no one can hurt you. And you really had can't. it, you were born that way, James. Whitman. I was born that way. I was. I definitely Not was. everybody is, but you no. actually were because you took a leap more than a leap of faith, you took a leap of knowing. Yeah, yeah. And you just and you just kept going. Yeah, I, I've never been. Um, I don't know. I, I was born that way that I just keep on go, 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 and I don't really. I I I don't think about the negative of it. I just keep. No. Even when I when I came to Los Angeles, I had no job whatsoever. I was promised a job from a producer, didn't happen, and I was literally stuck in Hollywood, not knowing a soul, not having a job, not having a place to live, yeah. and I was going to give my blood up at one point. But I, thought I got to give a resume out, go do temporary jobs, and I did that. And I knew it would change. I knew if I, I just knew it would. And one of the first, uh, I would say, churches, I, I used to take the bus to school to to work, and we passed the uh, Church of Religious Science, and I want to check that out. And it's the Church of Religious Science that I really became more aware of the mind, of how to, really believing in yourself, the mind power that we all have, and raising that awareness and using that mind power to manifest what I want in my life. And that's what I did. And I read a great book from James Allen. You know, it's a really, James Allen was a wonderful religious science uh, philosopher from England. And also books by Carnegie and a lot of other, Napoleon Hill, you know, a lot of different books about yeah. mind power. Norman Vincent Peale. Norman Vincent yeah. Peale. That's right. And it's really true. I mean, there's so much, and, and spirit comes through so much, and talk about how our thoughts are things. Thoughts are definitely things. They see thoughts all around you. Thoughts of color, texture, structure, 
We don't get to see it, but from their point of view, they do. And I'll often say, why do you live in that worry? You're putting worry all around you. And they've showed me that worry looks like pig pen in Charles uh, Schultz comics. Yes, with like that dark energy kind that of That dark thing. energy, and it blocks yeah, positivity. That, it blocks things. It does. It does. You know, I, my mom used to say, if you tr if you do something different, it's going to feel um, not, it's not going to feel good. And that means you're doing it right. Correct. And now I understand because the subconscious will hold us back <laughs> uh, if we try to make a move forward. You got to get to the end of your comfort zone. Yes, you have, that was my point. You have to get to the end of the comfort zone. Yeah, very, and, very true. Yeah. <clears throat> um, another one I wrote down here is um, um, what is what is clutter? It is as it a, it is a head trash that junk kept us there on our head. So getting rid of the head trash. <laughs> Clutter I love is that. that head trash. Head trash. Clutter is anything that does not support your better self. Right. Clutter is anything that does support your better self. And mental clutter is simply delayed decisions. Yes. <laughs> delayed <laughs> decisions. Out of and why are they delayed? Is it fear based? <coughs> is it trauma based? Is it what? I mean, really start to ask yourself these important questions. It's very, very true. Yeah. So be present in the moment completely. I, oh, this is a good one. Ask yourself these two questions that are very important in the mindset. Number one, what am I doing now? Is it important to me? And number two, does it matter to me or someone I love? Mm. Even one of the answers is no, you are not You are not on track. So you are doing something that's cluttering them. Um, this is when one of them wanted to talk about brain, brain dump at night. But in whatever you mind at night on your on your not at night on your paper or digital and get it sorted out tomorrow. Your priorities would be set. And I used to do that all the time. I used to make lists and say, I'll do that tomorrow, I'll do it tomorrow. So it's out of your head. That clutter gets out of your yeah. head. You don't want that because it can cause stress and anxiety and uh frustration. And you don't want to go into sleep state with that stuff. You just don't want to. Right. So right. tomorrow is another day. Um, I do that at night all the time, I write things down. I make lists. I really do. I'm a good list maker. I uh, start your next day with the most important thing. Take one task at a time. Break down big tasks into small tasks and enjoy your journey. And rock your day with morning pages. Okay. Oh, here's another one. A mind shift. Um, kill the FOMO. Fear of missing out. Oh, that's a big one for people. That's a, You know, and here's the thing, James. This is a singular journey. So you will be missing out on the mundane things in the world. But what you were saying is that inward, going inward, it's an inward journey. And the gifts that you have within you that you want to experience oh. can only be done that way. So the next That's day, it. you do something that you love to do that enhance yourself. You're not just going to fill it with junk. It's going to be stuff that enhances you. Right, exactly. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, um, it's really interesting. Um, here's one from um, uh, Arlene Dweber says, how to deal with neighbor. Again, that's their reality, not yours, right? Yeah. So that's their reality. That's true. You don't have to, you just do the basic legal stuff, and but you don't have to make it yours. Again, that lovely uh, expression, observe, don't absorb. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, separate knowledge attainment from mindless consumption, Live empty consumption. It's not necessarily to catch up with everything going viral. Very true. Get off devices. Oh, really my gosh. important. Right. You know, really important. And you have to be really consciously seeking a higher consciousness. I mean, to make a shift, you actually have to be so aware of every thought. You can do it. You can do, you it. do it. And do something different the next day. Find that you do something different. Eat something different. Um, play mm -hmm. with the kids at a different time. Um, do something fun and different. You never do. I went axe throwing this weekend. Have you ever done okay. that before? That's right. I, I've never done that. No, I've never done that. No, me with an axe. I, not a bad idea. Again, but it was yeah. interesting. I mean, for, for <laughs> I to do it. I did it. It was something new. It was you're, different. you're a good sport, though. You'll try I'm anything the first. I'll You'll jump out it. of a plane. I'll do that. Yeah. Yeah, no, I will not be. Doing I'm going to do a go kart you. right next week. I'll do a go kart. Really? Yeah, be all fun. new things. Yeah, I'll okay. try new things. Yeah. Right. Um, this is a good one, too. Zone out. Make a meal from scratch or play with your kids or garden or solve a puzzle or color or listen to music. Um, exercise daily. It's very important. Moving yeah. the body is very, very important. Yeah. Uh, take deep breath and observe your breath flowing. Keep a, keep a gratitude log. Oh, absolutely, James. Absolutely. Yeah. I love to, uh, when I walk Pearl in my, my 
property, I um, not only walk in here, but every step I take, I have gratitude. Thank you for the rocks. Thank you for the tree. Thank you for in this place. This I, I do that. And after you start doing that, it becomes a regular thing. It becomes part of you. And then you have gratitude in every aspect of your life. You don't have to think about yes. it. It just is. And when you have that kind of gratitude, you're not thinking of a negative. Right. You're not thinking of a negative and this and something bad and this and that. You just have a different shift. There's a shift in your consciousness at that point. It's true. And because it really is. It's a it's a belief system. It's a belief shift. Yeah. And when you start changing or shifting your belief system, it affects many, many areas. It affects your identity, problems, blockages, right. uh, the reality changes. Um, a good friend, Tony Stockwell, I told you about this last week, Kelly. I, I sent the video to you. I it, watched it. It was great. It wasn't it wonderful. Yeah. yeah. And he talks about when you're doing a reading, when a medium is doing reading, it's not that that part of you goes, I got to get six pieces of evidence or I got to go out there and do that. It's not that. He, he mentioned it, which I really love, the analogy of coming out of a meditation. When you come out of that meditation, you don't want to go back. Like I had so many people say, I want to stay with there. I want to stay there. It's that feeling you have, that light, joyful, joyful, loving feeling is really ha what we should have most of the time. Because that way you're not feeling um, pressured. You're not feeling, oh, I got to do something. I got to do something right now. It's easy. It's gentle. And life is like that. You can't push the river, as a Buddhist say. You got to let it flow. You gotta let it flow. It's much easier when we let things flow and surrender because they can come to us much easier on our path. And we can see them with a much clearer light. Right. And so there's the reason why you want to shift your consciousness. I mean, ultimately we're all headed we on earth, we all want to be at this place of service, ultimately. Ultimately. And there's a part of during this mind shift where there's going to be a transformation for you. Yes. When you start to have that, after you've been through what we call the survival and you've been through relationship and self-esteem and you've worked through all of these things, there's a, a place in the heart, actually, James, I feel that it comes like a heart chakra. Yeah. It's about transformation. And yeah. you start to, as you said, you have to, the gratitude and you start thinking and feeling differently. And there's a letting go of fear, letting go of, uh, giving you courage to, mo to move forward, giving you courage to move forward during this transformational point. And then you start finding meaning in your existence. Why am I here? Because so many times, James, and you must get asked this question all the time. I get it asked all the time. What's my purpose? Yeah. And yeah. if you don't slow down enough to go inward. You'll miss it. You'll miss it. The answer is inside you, as much as that sounds mm -hmm. more strange, but it is true because your soul is, is tucked neatly within. Yeah. And when you do go within, whether it's through meditation, mindfulness exercises, um, different self-awareness hobbies, if you will, it changes your whole perspective. It oh. changes your whole life. And I find lately that um, I love to laugh, right? And I love watching people smile and laugh and I do some crazy, funny things. But I love watching people get happy. And, and I noticed now when I come at the dog park, when I was away, I went back. I had a lot of people say, wow, it was so different without you, you know? Oh, you for so sure. Happy. I've been to the dog park with yeah, you. Yeah. I know. <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> Everyone just have a good time. And I want to make sure everyone, and I don't push it to have a good time. It's just who I am because that's how I, who I am. I'm just that. But it guy. is fun to see people happy. It's great to see. Then the opposite. Oh. They love being happy. Most right? people love being happy. Yeah. And especially now the time we're living in, we need to get more happiness and love out there and joy. And people say, how can you be so happy or joyful? I said, I know myself. Yeah. Yeah. I know who I am. I'm loving who I am. I love, I'm happy with who I am. I couldn't be any other person because I am who I am. Because none of us should be anyone else but ourselves. Because right. each one of us are unique soul individuals made up of a different tapestry, are here to help the big tapestry, the universal tapestry. So we all have a point. Even the brain might not know what it is right now. Your essence, your soul will get you there. It will guide you there. Your, your higher yes. self will guide you there. But if you're filling up your brain and your little crap. You'll get um, held back. Butter, yeah. Held With all back. The, it'll, it'll yeah. take longer. It'll, just, it'll take longer. Yeah. yeah, it'll take longer. And we're telling you some really good tips on moving forward, actually. I mean, again, it starts with being really conscious with everything in your being. What it, you know, what is going on in your life? Has you know what has held you back? And then start looking. And this is a great time to get help for anything that is. You might need some a therapist. You might need, a, you know, some to learn some tools. 
it's um, it's all possible. It's yeah. all possible to go to get to this place of transformation. And, and I thought, Kelly, when I was up in uh, away on my vacation there, um, I started thinking very differently, and I thought about mm-hmm. min- minimalism. Plus, I was ill in December. That probably also helped me. In that, I want to make things simple. I don't want to clutter my head. Just a, a computer might have too much information on it. You got to declutter it. You got to freeze that. You know, cl- clear that drive, if you will. And the mind also, we need to really, we have to minimize our thoughts, minimize the way we think. And to me, I'm not going to go out and buy gifts for anyone. Except for you, Kelly. Yeah. But <laughs> I, I would rather give people something that I love in my house that I have an emotion attached. Isn't to that them. wonderful? Yeah. I think that's the best thing to do. I think because, it's a um, great idea. Part of you is in that object, if you will. Yeah. So I think that's yeah. really, really important. Thanks, Kelly. Thanks, Renee. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Thanks, Renee. You've been listening to Both Sides Now and Beyond, featuring spiritual medium and master teacher James Van Brog and spiritual medium and psychotherapist Kelly White. That was great. Maybe we changed some lives. And maybe opened up some minds. Which way do I turn? Uh, right. Uh, I, I mean left. James and Kelly Show.